Hello again, everybody. I'm Al Michaels, along with Ken Drive. It should be a great night. I'm sure there are a lot of people in this building who do not know the difference between a blue line and a closed line. It's a row. It doesn't matter. Because what we have at hand, the rarest of sporting events. So this is my rather recently obtained Miracle on Ice Edition Super Checks Pro. And my original intent was to work with the Checks Mods guys and swap out to their Jumbotron and board system. But unfortunately, after talking to them, it sounds like they're in the middle of developing their own uh, table. And they weren't terribly interested at this point in doing any more selling any more mods for checks tables at least at this point in time so i figured i would strike out on my own uh, there's plenty of other great vendors out there doing uh you know the decal and uh dasher board systems and ice and new nets and everything like that so i work with a few of them uh to get this project going but the one thing i did think would be neat uh for this miracle on ice edition would be to swap out a lot of the sounds that you hear uh, the default check sounds with actual calls from you know al michaels and ken dryden from the actual game so the project started out is figure out how to do that, and uh, a lot of the credit goes to a uh, the pin side forum, specifically a user called Rick sixty six sixty eight, I believe it was, because he uh, posted some uh, fairly detailed instructions on just what those audio files are and how to go about swapping them. But until you sit down and delve into it a little bit, it isn't terribly inherently obvious, and so I had to print out all of his instructions and, and go through them a few times. But for anyone that's in the end, anyone that's even somewhat computer literate, it really isn't uh, that hard of a process because it just involves basically uh, overwriting some files on the SD cards that are installed on your SuperChecks Pro. So for a SuperChecks Pro, there's three cards, uh, SD cards in the game. There's two actually, you know, in the Jumbotron, you know, one on each side. I'm not going to break apart the Jumbotron again to show you those because... Uh, frankly, for just doing the audio files, you don't really even need to mess with those. The one you do have to mess with, however, and alter is the single SD card, or micro SD, I should say, that is on your motherboard. So we'll start working with that, and I'll show you, go through and show you how I went about modding the files. And I think the end results turned out pretty well. All right, very important. Just make sure anytime you're monkeying around inside your checks, make sure it's turned off. And also, just to be safe, I unplug it just in case I don't want any stray power surges or anything while I'm messing around on the circuit board. So to get to the first SD card, it's actually on the circuit board for the main checks itself. So depending on your version, I've got the wood base version, but for mine, it's under here in this cabinet. The lighting is actually quite terrible. Turn the light on here. So there's the main circuit board is mounted to the very top in my cabinet. And SD card, if I can zoom in close enough here, is right up there at a little SD card holder. So in order to get that card out, just push it. That'll uh, be spring loaded. It'll pop it out part way. And then uh, I actually have this little forceps that helps, helps me get my fingers up in there to grab it. Just pretty delicately, and you can pull the card out. So this is actually the original card that came with my check. It's just a 32 gigabyte micro SD uh, class 10 card. And you'll notice that uh, from the factory it came with a sticker with a generation number. So this check uh, runs on a generation 1.5 card, I guess, which is, and just got delivered earlier in the week. So as of today, I guess that's what they are up to. So Obviously, first thing we're going to need is some uh, SD cards to customize on our own. So I just got these off of Amazon. I know people have online in the forums have expressed uh, the pains as to what works and what doesn't. Um, went through that and I got figured these would work for me. Uh, my original card and my checks was a 32 gig. So that's what I went with, even though it looks like the files are a little bit less than eight. So I think a smaller card would work, but... I figured just to be safe, I'd match the card that I had in my original machine as best as possible. So these PNY 32 gigs, a three pack, I think it was something like 13, 14 bucks. So the only thing I noticed that was uh, really important, make sure you see the little class 10 there. And I think the original card was uh, 80 megabytes per second or better. So these up here are 100. So 
32 gig PNY class 10, that's what I got. I'm sure there's hundreds of others out there that would work, but uh, I do know these work at least in my machine. So I got a couple packs of these to modify and we'll go from there. All right, so first and foremost, what everybody says on the forums is you don't want to screw anything up. So I went ahead and I would recommend going ahead and making a backup of your original Chex SD card. So I've got mine in my hand here. I'm gonna pop it in the computer. An SD card reader. Take a second here for it to show up. There it is, just a generic no-name file. We'll double click on it and open up, and there is what is on my generic checks SD. So it shows up with a text file, a whole bunch of uh, Wave audio files. Goes all the way up to Wave 154, and then here start all the video and image files in these uh, locked bin files, which uh, I, like others, haven't found a way to get into those quite yet, but uh, we'll keep trying. But first thing I'm going to do, I just want to make a copy of this. So I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it checks SD backup. Go back into my SD card. I'm just going to select all and drag all, looks like 189 files into that new checks SD backup. So no matter what I do, I'm not going to touch this card whatsoever, but I've heard people say their uh, cards get corrupt over the time. So I figure if that ever happens with this card, I've got a complete uh, pristine backup of what untouched files were originally on my SD card just in this folder. I can reformat a card and and uh, create a new one if needed. So obviously when you get down to the video files, it takes a while. So I'm just gonna pause here. It's gonna take a few minutes to transfer everything. Okay, all those files have finished transferring. I'm pretty much done with my factory SD. So I'm gonna eject it. Make sure, don't just remove it from the computer. Make sure you go up to your uh, file window uh, and actually physically eject it. And I'll prevent any issues later. Remove it from the computer and now I'm just going to keep this factory SD card in a safe place should anything go wrong. Worst case, I can reinsert it in my checks and uh, get back to uh, generic. All right, now that that is done, so here's my freshly created backup which I don't want to touch. I'm just going to stick that on my hard drive for safekeeping if I ever need to revert. So I'm, first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to make a copy of that. So we're going to duplicate that. And so I'm modding a Chex Miracle on Ice uh, version. So I'm just going to call this is this new copy is going to be my working directory that I'm going to use to do all my work in. So I'm just going to call it uh, Chex uh, MOI. SD. So this will be the actual copy of things that I do all my work in. So I'm just going to take this original factory backup. I'm just going to put it there with the rest of my checks files and that's just stored there for safekeeping. So here's our working copy. I'm just going to open it up and spend a couple minutes here just showing you what is all is on uh, this card. So it starts out with a text file. And you open that, and it's just got a bunch of just random, well, not random, but uh, country names. So this corresponds to the order in which uh, the anthems are selected uh, in your settings menu on your actual check. So when you select National Anthem number one, it's the United States. National Anthem number two is English in Canada. Option number three is uh, Canadian Anthem in French, and you got Russia and... Uh, United Kingdom and the rest of these. I am not sure if those files are actually loaded on every checks or not, but I am pretty sure even the base generic checks have at least the first five. So this text file basically just is the placeholder that denotes when you select options one through five uh, for which anthem it plays, this is the order in which they are. And those actually uh, correspond to the first few wave files. So wave file number one is the US anthem, wave file number two is Canadian anthem in English, wave file number three is Canadian anthem in French, four is the Russian national anthem, or old USSR, I should say, and number five is uh, God Save the Queen. 
So if you ever got to the point where you want to change which anthem you play, you want to play like a team anthem or any other song, you could actually swap out these uh, the anthem to whatever these WAV files. So say you didn't need the UK anthem. If you want to play some custom song, theoretically I believe you could uh, save that song, rename it 005 WAV, replace this file, and then when you go in your game options menu on your super checks, you select uh, number five when it asks you which anthem you want to play and it now should play uh, that number five anthem whatever you created so we'll go through the rest of some of these files and just go over uh, what all they are all right wave files 6 through 17 all have to do with the start and end of each period 6 and 7 are the start of the first wave 8 is the end of the first Wave 9 is the start of the second. Wave 10 is the end of the second. Wave 11, start of the third. Wave 12 is the end of the game, meaning the game ended in regulation time. Uh, 13 is also another end of regulation. And number 14, if the game is tied at the end of regulation, that's the uh, end of regulation over time's coming up next. Uh, 15 is the start of overtime, 16 is uh, 16 and 17 are game over in overtime sounds if you want to modify those. Going next into waves 18 through 25. Whoops. 18 through 25 are just random sounds that play periodically as the gameplay is underway. So if you wanted to just take random play-by-play -play snippets and replace those, uh, then those would all, those uh, several files would all play just randomly at any time uh, the puck is in play. Next, we get into the he scores or the plate the the files that play immediately after a goal is scored by either team. These aren't team specific, unfortunately, so they're just kind of generic. Uh, they'll randomly play uh, when at, whenever either team scores. So that's wave files 30 through 39. So <clears throat> you can swap those out with uh, some kind of he scores or a goal. Uh, just keep in mind that you can't specify which team it's for. Um, so if you want to keep them generic, that's probably the best way. Or if you don't care, then you don't care. Let's see, next ones, 40 through 49. Those wave files all play when the puck is sensed going through the crease. So they're the, you know, shot it wide, hit the crossbar, just missed, hit the post, anything like that. Next is wave files 50 through 68. And these are the files that play when you hit the boo button. And like everybody's have kind of been complaining that if a previous sound is playing and you hit the boo button, all it does is, you know, activate the ejector. It won't override a sound that is already playing. But if a sound is not playing at the time you hit the boo button, it will randomly select uh, one of these 50 through 68 sounds. So of which uh, there are only, let's see, a few that are actual boos. 51 is an actual boo. Looks like 53 is an actual boo. Uh, there's some other random cheering. Um, I believe that's 63, 67, and 57. But anything else, there's you know just some random commentary. So if you overwrite any of these, these will randomly play anytime you hit the boo button. Um, if another like random sound or goal sound or anything else is not already playing because the boo sounds will not override a file that's already playing. Next is 70 through 79. And these sounds are all the sounds that randomly play in a tracked mode. So if your system is powered on and it's not doing anything, you know, depending on your settings, every so often it will play one of those 70 through 79 sounds. So that's kind of a neat feature. You can customize those any way you like. Let's see, 80 through 89. These are all the sounds that play after the home team scores. You'll get the initial goal 
Uh, and then as the video replay plays, uh, one of these sounds will play kind of as commentary on the goal. So the nice feature about these is these are customizable, customizable to your team. So 80 through 89 will play after a home goal. Uh, the next batch, 90 through 99, are sounds that will play after uh, the, for the commentary or description of an away goal while the little video replay is playing. Uh, on mine, like I said, I just have a generic Miracle on Ice. I don't know if the, N I think the NHL versions may have uh, a lot more of these, but 100 through 104 are goal horn sounds. So if you want to swap out your goal horn, uh, I could swap out uh, files 100, 101. I'm guessing... Uh, that if you have a NHL version, uh, your board supports selecting an actual goal horn, goal horn according to the team. Um, on mine, my Miracle on Ice one, I don't have too many options. So 100 through 104, and presumably anything else in the low 100s, I'm guessing, are all goal horns. Uh, and last one, the wave files 150 to 154, those are additional uh, national anthems. Um, corresponding to some of those other countries we saw in that text file. So I think it's uh, Turkey, Finland, Germany. Um, there's one more I don't remember. And turns out 154 is just a duplicate of the U.S. anthem. But 150 to 154 are other anthems. You can try playing with those uh, depending on what options you get in your checks settings screens for, for anthems. Maybe you can play around with those some more. And then we get into all these uh, bin files, which again, I haven't found a way to get into. These are all the the in-game videos and images for logos and whatnot, which uh, at this point I haven't found a way to modify. So administratively, one other thing we're going to need to do before we get started is we're going to need some means of working with resaving, resampling the audio files to get them converted into the right format. So what I recommend, as well as a lot of other people, there is a free program out there called Audacity. Uh, it works in uh, Windows or Mac, which is nice. So it's uh, www.audacityteam. So it's A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y team.org. So www.audacityteam.org. Go to that website and you get the Audacity page. There's a link here for download Audacity. And you get some downloads here, and it's kind of nice. You've got options for Windows, uh, Mac, or Linux if you happen to. So I'm just using the Mac version. Middle download. Go into your downloads folder. And you can go through the... Uh, Install directions. There's an executable in the Windows version for the Mac version. All you do is drag it in your Applications folder. I'm not going to do it because I already have it installed. But uh, Audacity is uh, it's a great tool for doing this, and it is 100% free. And I've been using it for years. Don't have to worry about viruses or anything else. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to want to prepare our new SD card. So I've got my blank. 32 gig new PNY card. I'm going to pop that in my SD card reader. There it shows up as untitled one. And if we open it up, we see there is nothing on the card, so it's a blank card. I would recommend, like others have said uh, in the forums, just to avoid any potential problems, it works best if you do a fresh format on the card before you start working on it. So Windows, you can format it in Windows. Obviously, I got a Mac, so Disk Utility is what we use for that on the Mac. Open up Disk Utility. Scroll down here, find my micro SD. There it is, generic micro SD untitled one. And I want to do a fresh erase and format. And so this is going to be important. Uh, I'm going to name it. I'm just going to call it uh, MOI for Miracle on Ice. Checks. SD, and this is going to be important here, the format on Mac, it defaults to Mac OS Journal. Uh, we want it to be MS-DOS FAT or DOS FAT32, I believe is the option when you're reformatting it in Windows. So we named it, 
MS-DOS FAT. I'm going to click Erase, and it does its thing. It's unmounting and then reformatting the card. And operation successful. Click Done, and well, it shows up down there, but now it remounts it, and there it is, my fresh reformatted SD called MOI Checks SD. So that is all ready to start dragging files onto uh, as we get going. All right, and also obviously we need some means of grabbing the audio file that you want to use to begin with. You know, presumably it's either uh, probably in this day and age it's off of a YouTube clip. So a couple ways to do that. Uh, tell you what, I'm doing Miracle on Ice, and obviously for a sound I need to have the final 10 seconds of the Miracle on Ice. So let's just use that as an example here. I'm just going to open up uh, YouTube. And, uh, <clears throat> like I said, I want the uh, Do You Believe in Miracles call, so pretty probably 500 ways to uh, search this, but do you do you believe in miracles? Search for that, and yeah, here's a whole uh, bunch of stuff. So let's just go with this second one here, Final Minute of Miracle on Ice. Click it. And there it is, so... What we are going to need is the link to that video, no matter what uh, method we use. So if you go down to the share, if you don't know, that's how you get a link. You hit share, it gives you a, a quick link. You can just copy the link, and then it's in your clipboard. So we're done with that. So there's a couple ways to, and obviously we just need the audio. So a couple ways to do that. There is, There are a bunch of online uh, extractors. Um, I've used a bunch over the years. I'm going to hesitate to say that's what you should do because I have heard I've never had a problem personally, but some of these free uh, YouTube audio conversion sites do have the potential to download viruses or malware. Um, so I'm just going to show you this as an example. Um, if you want to try it, there's like I said, there's hundreds of sites that do this. Uh, one I have used in the past is called uh, ytmp3.cc. If you open that website, you get this YouTube to MP3 con video converter. Uh, you get a search link here. All you do is you paste your link there for your YouTube video. It'll look for it here for a second. So you paste your link in there. It thinks for a second, and then it comes up Final Minute of a Miracle on Ice. You can hit Download MP3. And it should show up in your downloads folder and there it is in your downloads folder drag it here to my desktop final minute of the miracle is mp3 so like i said that's one way of doing it um again buyer beware if you want to try doing it that way with a free online converter you can do it again um does have the potential depending on which site you use to download some malware so probably the better way to do it is to download a free app that actually extracts it uh, and Reddit recommend for that is a app called ClipGrab, ClipGrab.org, and you can do a free download. Uh, you don't have to donate. And there's the disk image file or install executable. You click on that. Like I said, I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to mess with it. But clip grab, I would recommend, probably if you're going to be doing a lot of this, probably grab a dedicated app that strips the audio from, or that downloads the YouTube audio rather than one of the online uh, free services. So clip grab will actually download the actual uh, video file, not just the audio, which is kind of nice too. If we ever figure out a way to modify the videos, uh, that would give you the whole uh, video file to work with. So let me just demonstrate this. I'm going to go to Clip Grab. And that's the generic window. We just paste in our YouTube link there. And like I said, it will only match the highest you know resolution that's available on YouTube. It looks like it's uh, 480p. And you can actually 
pick whatever uh, format you want. If, if, if you want the Windows Media or MPEG-4 if you want the whole video, but they also do have a MP3 audio only option. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that because we're only going to be working uh, with the audio for this. So I'm going to select MP3, grab the clip, but ask you where you want to save it. Just put it on my desktop and should be converting here. There we go. There's the one that clip grab uh, finished. That's the one that clip grab created for me. So now I got the, this is the one from the free online service. Uh, like I said, I'm going to just delete that because I don't know if I trust open it. And here is the one from our uh, clip grab app. All right, now that we have our extracted audio of the clip we want to use, now we this is where Audacity comes in because we actually need to manipulate it. So I'm going to open up Audacity here, opens up a blank project, and you can file import your file or just as easy to, if it's on your desktop here, just drag and drop into the window. And you can see it populates the waveform here uh, of our extracted audio. So just make sure it grabbed it. I'm just going to hit the play button. There it is. You can see the play bar going as it goes. Uh, but we're not going to want this whole minute. So I just want really the last 10 seconds. So I just figure, figure out where that is here. All right, so that was start at 11. So I'm going to start there with my play bar. I'm just going to click and drag to select a portion. Again, I don't need a whole lot, so I'm just going to drag to that much of it. And I'm going to come up to Edit. I'm going to cut. That'll cut my portion. I'll just delete that. And I'm going to do Edit Paste. And this should just repaste just the section that, that I cut out previously. So let's check it. All right, and that's about all I want for my, my clip. So I'm going to highlight the rest of this. Just hit Delete. That gets rid of it. And now I've just got roughly a section containing uh, what I want to convert to audio the last 10 seconds of the Miracle on Ice. So now that that is done, we need to get it in the correct format to be usable by checks. So we can check that. I'm going to go back to my original checks backup file here. I'm just going to pick a random wave file here, wave one, which is the anthem. Um, you can do this on Windows by right clicking and going to properties or uh, on a Mac here it is get info it brings up the info for that file and we can see here it's a waveform Windows audio file and the important thing is we want to come down here to sample rate and bits per sample you can see that this one is a sample rate of 22 kilohertz and a bits per sample of 16 um, so if I save my audio file as something other than that, chances are it isn't going to play. It'll sound distorted. Maybe it'll play too fast, play too slow. Uh, you just don't know. But I have heard some other people saying on their checks SDs that they had a 32 bits per sample. Um, I tried that when I tried modding mine, and it did not work. It played uh, super slow and distorted. So at least on my checks card and game it requires a 22 kilohertz and 16 bits per sample but i would recommend before you modify anything go in here uh, check out properties or get info on your original wave file see uh, what was actually on your original card but 22 kilohertz and 16 bits is what i'm going with because i know that works so in audacity now we need to you know, get it to show that. So you can see our project rate here for this project is 44.1. Well, that's going to be too fast uh, for what we need. So I need to drag that down to 22.05. And I also can see on this particular file, it's sampled in 44.1 kilohertz, 32-bit uh, float. So I need to change that. So in order to change it for this waveform, I want to go up to Tracks, Resample, and uh, I want to make sure it's set to 22.05, hit OK. 
All right, now we see stereo 22.05 hertz, so that's the right frequency. Uh, mine still says 32-bit float, but we're going to fix that next when we import it. So, or export it, I should say. So if I just go file, uh, if I go save project, that's going to save it as an Audacity file, meaning it's in a format you can still work with uh, naturally in Audacity. I don't need that. What we want is a uh, wave. Uh, file. So obviously we imported it as an MP3. We want Audacity to export as a uh, WAV file. So in order to do that, we come up the File Export. Here's your options: MP3, WAV, OGG. We want WAV, and we get an option: Save as Final Minutes. I'm just gonna. We're actually going to call it 10, 10 sex. And in coding here, this is where we need to double check this. Um, it was 32-bit float, which some guys say on their cards uh, is what they required. Again, mine needed uh, to be 16-bit. So I'm going to do with 16-bit uh, PCM. Make sure it changes to that and then hit save. And there it is, final 10 seconds dot wave. So let's double check that it uh, saved in the correct format. I'm going to right click that. Again, go to properties or on a Mac, get info. And there we go, 22 kilohertz, 16 bits per sample. So it should have converted into a format that I need. So now that that is done, uh, We've got a file that we can just drag and drop where we want it on our checks, uh, Miracle on Ice modified SD. So I open that file, uh, and like I said, I, I want that sound, let's say I want it to play as one of the just random attract sounds. So randomly, if the machine's on, not doing anything, it's going to do the final 10 second call. Uh, I don't know if you remember from the uh, original what file is what discussion, uh, we know that 70 through 79 are the attract files. So I'm just going to go in. I'm going to take my final 10 seconds and let's say I want to put it in place of this number 70. So I'm going to rename the file. Obviously final 10 seconds is going to mean nothing to uh, the checks motherboard. You obviously need to follow the naming convention. So I want to replace sound 070. So 070. Rename that file. Now I just drag and drop. And I want to replace it. All right, we'll do one more just as an example. So uh, let's say we want to replace one of the he scores sounds that plays after a goal. So let's do uh, let's do Mike Eruzioni's goal since it's the Miracle on Ice version. So let's just go Mike Eruzioni goal. There we go, Mike Eruzioni game winner. That's probably as good a bet as any. We'll select it. Right, so that one will work. We'll go share. I'm gonna copy the link. Go back to our clip grab. Paste our link. It finds it uh, again. I want MP3 audio only. Looks like this one's only 240p, but that's all right. Grab the clip. Uh, save it on the desktop as a Ruzioni game winner does its thing, says it's finished, there it is, over on the desktop, done with clip grab, done with YouTube, back to Audacity, open it up, drag it in there, there's the waveform, and again, we just don't want the full minute, we probably just want the goal, so let's see where that starts. Right about there. And we'll go to about there. So select it, edit, we'll cut. 
delete that. Repaste just that section. Yeah, probably a little long. Just cut it another second or two. All right, once again, uh, this was in his mono, it shouldn't matter, but it's uh, a project weight of 44.1. Again, we want it to 22 kilohertz. Change it to track. Want to resample to 22050. Hit OK. There it's done it. 22050. 32 bit float, but we'll fix that when we export. File. Export as a wave file. Mark Rusey Game Winner. Save it to the dex desktop as a 16 bit PCM. And hit save. There it is over there as our Game Winner. Go back and open up our working checks XD card here and we want to replace a he scores uh, sound file which I believe we said that was wave files 30 through 39 so we just need to drop it in uh, one of those we'll just replace number 30 so there's our game game winner dot wave rename it 030 dot wave Drag it in there, hit replace, and that should be the correct file now. Double click it. All right, so there's our 030 wave. Double check, 22 kilohertz, 16 bits per sample. It should work in my checks. So one thing I should mention is uh, clipping YouTube videos is uh, one thing, but what about other websites or video clips that you can't uh, necessarily have a web link that you can clip and save, such as, uh, like, let's just take a, a screen grab off of uh, NHL.com video. So you can actually record... Uh, audio straight from your computer into Audacity. So I just went to NHL.com here to demonstrate this. Just picked a random, random clip here. But if you come in Audacity, you can, you're going to have to figure out on your own uh, what your in, best input and output sources here are. But you can, by the microphone icon there, you can pick what your audio input is, and then just find your uh, whatever your NHL clip is there or other website clip, start playing it, and when you get to the point you want to record, you just hit the record button, and you'll notice it'll actually start recording the audio from uh, your clip live on screen rather than and downloading it and clipping it uh, with Clip Grabber. But, so that is another option uh, for you. I just wanted to show you that. All right, so now obviously you go back through, pull whatever other goal call, play-by-play, -play, track sounds, uh, boo button sounds, whatever you want to uh, replace, you do that for everything you want to replace, drag them into your working directory, and uh, can fully customize all of your sounds. See, once you're all done, you need to get your the copy you've been working on transferred onto your, you know, your blank reformat SD card. So all you do, you've got your complete uh, working file here that you've made all your changes to. All you have to do is select everything in that folder and click and drag it onto your blank SD card. And you can see it's going to copy, looks like 190 items, so six point, uh, almost 6.8 gigs. So it's going to take a little while, uh, probably five to ten minutes depending on your computer, but we'll let that uh, transfer. So all of the files have now transferred onto my newly created modded Chex SD card. All that remains to be done is to come in here. We're going to eject it, pull it out our SD card reader. We'll take it downstairs, pop it in our checks, and see how everything works. So now we're ready to put our modified card back in. Goes label side 
down in my case, or outwards, I guess, from the uh, PC board. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. So, excuse my forceps. Slide it back in part way. I can just use my finger. And it'll, you'll hear it push it in, and it'll click in, and you'll hear it lock. And at this point, we're done. Lock things back up. And plug ourselves back in. Turn the machine back on. So just do a quick demo here of uh, what the end result was. Let's get the uh, volume turned up here. The excitement, the tension building, the Olympic Center building the capacity, the face value of a top ticket for tonight's game, sixty-seven dollars twenty cents. Outside, they're exchanging hands at three times the face value. Very good team. A team that's better than they are. And after that time, after it's all over, this team will find out an awful lot about themselves. They'll simply find out how good they are. 11 seconds. You've got 10 seconds. The countdown going on right now. Morrow. Up the show. Five seconds left in the game. Do you believe in miracles? Yes! Unbelievable. Thank you. 
And here we go, overtime. Right now, back down to the point to Baker. Baker skates in. Baker trying to center him.